One of the good things that the word of God does is it shows you who you are. The word of God is a mirror. It shows you who you are. So when they bring out things from the scripture, it exposes where your weaknesses are. It's not to condemn you. God's word does not condemn you, but just to help you to become better and improve you. So every time you come to his presence, it's an exposition to the word of God. It's what exposes you and areas where you need God to be able to help you. And you know, one of the things I always like to tell people is that you need to be sincere. You know, you can, someone said, there are three people you cannot hide from. You cannot hide from, no, you cannot lie to. You can't lie to your pastor. You can't lie to your, hold on, you can't lie to your lawyer. You can't lie to your doctor. So if you lie to your pastor and say, oh, this is what is going on, he will pray based on what you have said to him, right? If you lie to your doctor, he will treat you based on what you are saying. And if you lie to your lawyer, he will take your case. He will defend you based on what you have said. So if there are three people that you must be true to externally, very well. A people you come with to is your pastor, your lawyer, and your doctor. Aside from God, well, well, God is first and all that. Amen. You can, but we lie to God a lot anyway. But he already knows that you're lying. Praise God. So, but I'm going to have a digression and um, today is not going to be Joseph. Uh, so, I don't have the grace for where PJ is. Uh, I try to say, oh, let me find out where I will just about. That's not the direction God was asking me to take and all that. So, um, we're going to have a different direction this morning. And um, it's one thing that I said to myself that as I grow with God, I would I prefer my Christianity to be very practical. So anything that I am not involved in, I don't want to talk about it. Anything I'm not doing, I don't want to be, what's the word? I don't want to share. Because the worst thing you can do is to tell people, like the way a lot of motivational speakers motivate you and they are broke. And you just go up and they leave you there. You're hanging. Some things that they've not practiced, they just read it in books. They just come to tell you, and you are gingered. You will not go and try. But they will not tell you that there are some areas where you will go to the prison and you will go into the pit. They will just tell you, you can get to the palace. You can get to the palace. You will get to the palace. But they forget to tell you that you will meet Potiphar's wife. So you have a choice. Do you understand? Is it that you are you administer or you go to prison? Amen. So today we're going to be talking about hearing God's voice. And you know, I when I was praying for God to give me a word to be able to say to speak and all that, one of the things God said to me today is I speak, but my children don't hear listen and i was trying to say i speak and the truth is that god speaks at every point in time you know because we do not listen we begin to hear strange voices because we do not listen we begin to hear strange voices the first scripture we want to look at is in john 10 27 popular scripture can you put it up for me John 10, 27. Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So the first question is, do you hear God's voice? How many of us know that God speaks? So the next question, how many of us hear God? How many of us hear? No, be sincere. Some people are not raising their hand. They are not sure whether they hear God. So this is a scripture that places a lot of balance. And I like this. It says, my sheep. So if you are not hearing God, you are not God's sheep. <laughs> Whose sheep are you? My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. He says, I know them. And they follow me. They don't just hear my voice. They hear my voice. I know them. And 
they follow me. So the moment you are not following, you are also not a sheep. We need to question whose sheep you are. And this was so interesting for me because I began to look at a lot of things and I was wondering, I said, oh, okay. If God speaks every time, God speaks in diverse situations. God speaks through different things. So the problem is not God. The problem is you and I. You see that we are pretending not to hear. Have you ever been where your mother is calling you and you just pretend like you are not hearing? How many of us, I did it, so God forgive me. My son will not do it to me in Jesus' name. <laughs> like, they will call you. You are hearing, but just pretend like, I don't know what I'm calling. I did hear. Because you can sometimes emphasize what they want to do and you don't want to be part of it. So, you just close your, like, you know you can shut your, but this scripture is very explicit. My sheep hear my voice. They hear my voice. I know them. I. So God knows those who are his. You know, when people begin to say a lot of things and say, uh, that's why I was talking to someone this week and I was telling the person, I said, stop being disturbed about you. you have a lot of deceitful pastors. I said, go to the scripture. It's clear. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. So it's very easy for you to know who is God's sheep. Once you are going out of the world, doing things that is out of this world, you are somebody else's sheep. You know, it's funny how God relates with us. And I began to understand, okay, so how do we now begin to hear the voice of God? I mean, you know, a lot of us, sometimes we, you say like, ah, is it that you just close your ear? My son, my son, my son. And, well, so people might hear, maybe people like Adeboe, the level where they've entered, people like Oedipo, they'll be hearing, my son, my son. Some of us will not hear, my son, my son. They won't. Some people hear the voice of God, like, literally, like the way God spoke to Moses. It's a personal thing. So don't look for a way, one way that fits everybody, that all of us will hear the same way. No. Same way I just said that some people's faith are different. The way we grab our faith and grow in our faith is different. Some people, the audacity in faith is another level. Hallelujah. But the moment you get saved, you start hearing the voice of God. But I will explain this to Ross. The moment you get saved is an acquaintance level. I mean, I'm just meeting Emmanuel for the first time and myself and Emmanuel begins to talk. I won't really hear Emmanuel's voice or know Emmanuel's voice. Because we're just getting to know each other. But as we begin to grow from that level of acquaintance to friendship, even if Emmanuel is talking outside, because there's a relationship with me and Emmanuel, I will know Emmanuel's voice. Say Emmanuel is around. Why? There's a relationship. Some of us have left ourselves in that level of acquaintance with God. And have refused to grow to that level of friendship with God. So, it's difficult to be able to hear his voice when he speaks. And that's why you have a lot of arguments when God says, do this, or do this, or do this. You say, no, this is not the voice of God. This is the voice of the devil. Get thee behind me, Satan. But when there is a level of intense relationship, the voice becomes clearer. If my wife speaks anywhere, I will know it's my wife. And if a stranger speaks, I will know that I don't know this voice. I begin to decipher where, who is this? Who, who, trying to tell, hey, this voice looks from now. I heard it somewhere before and all that. Because, because it's not a voice or a person I have a relationship with, I might not bother myself. So, with God, God speaks at every time to his children. The big deal
will right now is the fact that his children have refused to incline their ear to hear his voice. We are not selective the kind of voice we want to hear. And you know, the moment you get more intimate with God, the less voices you hear. The moment your relationship becomes more intensified, the less voices you hear. So when people begin to tell me, I hear strange things, I hear, strange, I ask them, whose voice are you listening to more? You can't have a relationship with God, intense relationship with God, and some voices will be suppressing the voice of God. No way. You will know when he's talking. The voice of God is not always loud. And there's anything that is pushing you, Jim, Jim, Jim. God will not be pushing you, Jim, Jim, Jim. So you just know. <laughs> Nothing that's making you do hasty. God is not in haste. So you can check. So one of the things you must do to hear the voice of God clearly is you spend your time with the word of God. You know, I was talking to someone. I said, you know, you know God just has a way of dealing with me and making me be in some wrong, wrong places. I call it wrong places because sometimes when you just have your faith is not tested until when you start exhibiting it outside the light. Hello? The reason why God gave you wisdom is so that foolish people can be able to know that there's a difference between you and them. The reason why I call the light is so that you can shine in the midst of darkness. And I was having a conversation with someone and while we're having that conversation, I said to the person, have you wondered, I asked, I said, when you, how many of you have ever slept and you listen to a message sleeping? How do you feel when you sleep when you listen to the message? Hmm? You wake up feeling good. You, you like, if you listen to worship and you sleep, how do you feel when you wake up? But when you listen to some of these songs that are God in heaven knows, and you wake up, how do you feel? So, you cannot be a spiritual being and live your life like a carnal being. There are certain things that you must be intentional about. So, in hearing the voice of God, you want to spend more time with the word of God. There's no shortcut to it. Hey! And if you don't study the word, you don't listen to the word. The Bible says, faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. If you don't spend time with the word of God, your faith cannot be built. And me, I always like to do things. When I'm studying the Bible, I look at it and say, so if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, doubt comes by not hearing and not hearing the word of God. It's very simple. So the reason why you're having a lot of struggle with, oh, do I believe God? And can God really do this thing? Can God do the X, Y, Z? It's because you are not studying or listening to the word of God. That's why your doubt level is increasing. That's why you're questioning God. I told someone, I said, why are you discussing who gave birth to Jesus? Who gave birth to God? Who is the wife of God? How does that one concern your life? There are other issues that you should be disturbing yourself about. But say, I need to know before I connect to this faith. I said, really? The problem that he's doing is more than you. May God just help you. If we want to have a discussion, let us discuss how God, this faith I believe in will progress my life. Not who gave birth. How is the person who gave birth to God going to help you? Simply just believe him. Whether it fell from the sky or whatever it is, just believe him. His word has already said it, and then you'll be fine. You want to know how old God is? Why, how does that concern your progress in life? Is he going to add his age to your age? Are we together? So, you need to spend more time with the word. And you know, the funny thing about you have the living word of God, you have the Rema, you have the Logos. Now, the truth be told, have you ever been in a situation where a scripture just pops out in your spirit and addresses the situation? Yes. Where did it come from? Where did it come from? 
from studying the word or listening to the word, the scripture will not fly from anywhere. It won't. You must have heard it somewhere. You must have studied it. So when that situation comes, the scripture just pops out and gives you a solution to what you need to. Have you ever been in a situation where God just says, yeah, people are in the midst of crisis and all that. And all of a sudden, God just said, remove that iron and this problem will be solved. It looks foolish. And you just remove it and just say, ah, someone just, ah, ah, this guy, you know, you know the works. Ah. Whereas you can't, you didn't even tell that you just heard the voice of God say, remove that. And you know the funny thing that God's words, God's instructions are always foolish. Most times it never makes sense. Most of the time. That's why we struggle with it. One of the reasons why we struggle with God's word is because it doesn't make sense. So you are quite to question, is it God that is speaking? So when God is saying, empty your account, you are saying, eh, this cannot be God. This is flesh. For what now? This is flesh. Are we together? But my sheep hears my voice and the answer. They follow. I'm particular about this because one of the reasons why the church is where the church is today is because we are listening to too many voices. We are following too many voices. People are running heter skater looking for solution here and there. But if you spend time with the world, you will hear God's voice clearly and you will follow well. And that's one of the things we are building in the cave church is for you to have a personal relationship with God. Let me tell you something. Sunday is not enough to help you. You can't grow with your Sunday service. It can't sustain you. Seven days in a week, you are only eating one meal for one hour or 40 minutes. You will die of malnutrition. So some of us have spiritual malnutrition. Spiritual kwashoko. Because all we hear is messages on Sunday. And after that, we shut down. But we hear different messages from different places that are not of God. That's why our life is full of chaos. You know one beautiful thing that the word of God does and when you hear the voice of God, it that it brings peace. In the midst of the storm, it will bring peace. So when God speaks, you feel that, oh yes, God has said something. You will know. If you are his, you will know. You will struggle. You know, ah, this is God talking. Ah, but God, why now? Ah, you might have that little, but there's a level where you get to that you know that is not, uh, I think it was Pastor Dami that was sharing on, um, on Thursday. We're looking at um, Abraham and um, she was making a reference to Abraham and um, Daniel and um, why they could say they won't take, Abraham was saying he will not take of the spoil that he went to, he got when he went to rescue Lot and um, um, Daniel was saying, I won't eat of the king's food. Just give me the normal regular food so that the king will not, at the end of the day, say, he, it was his food that made me fresh. And you know, that was better out of a place of understanding and intimacy with God. They knew the God they served. That even if I eat beans, or I'm even eating kuli kuli, I will still be fresher than those who are eating from the king's palace. As long as God is involved. Do you know that you look better than some people who have all the money in the world? Hello? Do you know that you have peace of mind more than people who have money in the world? Because there's something you have that they don't have, which is God. You know, one day I was talking with PJ and PJ said to me, he said, if you look like what you are going through, then God is not involved. Yes, sir. Sepitons, if you look like what you are going through, then God is not involved. So what God does, if God is introduced into your life, when you tell people, this is what I'm going to do, look at it like, I, unbelievable. You are looking like, with all smile, with everything, they can't understand. Because it means that the material things are not what makes you. But what you carry on your inside, that's the joy that gives you pleasure and peace. Amen. Sometimes God
God speaks to you for someone else. So while you are hearing, it might not be for you. It might just be for someone else. I remember a particular time in my life when I was in school. If God wants me to pray for something, he would give me the signs on my body. So I can have a pain in my knee and I will know that someone is going through a knee pain. It will just come all of a sudden. I could just have one headache. It's not like it's me that is having the headache for myself. But that was how he was helping me to intercede for people. So I just pray. And I'll pray headache in the name of Jesus. I command you to go. And I'll just be like, oh, okay. Whoever is having headache right now, I stand in the gap for the person. And you just hear somebody come to you. Ah, I saw something I had headache like this, but it has gone. And I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> so hearing vo the voice of God or hearing God is not just for yourself, for the people around you. And when he speaks, you must be able to hear. Sometimes God wakes us at night to pray. Have you ever been in that situation where you cannot sleep? You will do everything to look for sleep. It will not come. You will go and bath to say your body should be relaxed. You know, you will, you will try to take something that will make you sleep. You will not sleep. And maybe God is just saying to you at that time, stand in the gap for someone. You, you are looking for the sleep. You not, some of you not carry phone and be pressing and pressing and pressing and pressing till daybreak to just say, let the thing just go. The sleep will not still come. But God actually just wants you to stand in the gap for someone. And when you stand in the gap, you feel more fulfilled. Even if it's 30 minutes, you just pray for that prayer. You don't know what you are praying. You are praying in the Holy Ghost. Because you might not be able to point anything. But you just finish praying in the Holy Ghost. You feel like as you go and sleep. The Bible says that kind of sleep is that he giveth his beloved sleep. With peace of mind. But it takes a lot. You know, while we are not experiencing, and I I say this with all apology. With all apology. I think it was myself and my wife that was saying something. I said, do we really have prophets who can stand? I say, I declare in Nigeria, X, Y, Z, and everybody will stand and listen. Do we? Maybe we do. But they just don't want to take... Maybe God just knows that some of us, he's good that he does not give us power yet. You know, you know. Because some of us, we go, we go off. And maybe the power will destroy us. That's why God is making... And you know, God is not a God of... He's not a God of... Uh, he will want you to be disciplined enough to be able to handle what he will give to you. Because I just imagine that as we have chaos in this country, I just say, I declare over Nigeria, anybody that steals money, you and your generation be wiped out. They'll just be dying. You just see like one, two, three people. Senator this die. Senator that. Ah, everybody will adjust. They will adjust. Where is that prophet? They'll be looking for you. Eh? No, anybody that be stealing Nigeria's money, you are just declaring. If you, I give you 24 hours to come and confess, else your total generation will be wiped out. Maybe one person is just sampled. Two, three, ah. You that simple coming to national TV. Ah, I stole low. Where should I return the money? I stole. In the days of his power. Is that power of God still available? Yes. But it's just that we have refused to take responsibility to. You know, there are burdens that God has put in each and every one of us. But because we don't hear his voice, we slide away from it. Some of us are intercessors for our family. Some of us are intercessors for the nation. Some of us are intercessors for some of the pillars of the world. Some of us are intercessors for the church. Your work is just to be praying for the church. But because you have refused to hear the voice of God, you say, I am me. Ah, say, no, it's not me. God knows those who you are called to be praying. Let them go and be doing their assignments. Praise God. John 10, 16. Other sheep I have. Other 
other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. There are people who are out there who are God's own. See what God is saying. And all that sheep I have, which are not of this fold, where we are now, them also I must bring. True who? True who? It's me and you. So when he has been saying, go and do evangelism, you will be saying, no, I'm not an evangelist. So we need to know who sheep you are. You know, a lot of us are looking for that perfect term. And then how many of us are shy? No, let me, let me really, let's, uh, let's be realistic. How many of us really, how many of, really, how many of us are really witness to someone about Jesus? No judgment zone, don't worry. How many of us, are, how many of us want to witness for Jesus? How many of us don't know how to witness for Jesus? So one of the best things I always tell people with this, witnessing for Jesus is nothing but your testimony. Where's your best restaurant, Joy? Or what's, what's your favorite restaurant? No, not Joy. Not me. My wife. Don't even go there with the restaurant, my wife. What? Cilatro. Okay, what, 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 what trips you about Cilatro? The ambience. So if I just came and said, oh, I'm, I'm Joy, I'm looking for a restaurant that I can just make myself go, what, what would be the first thing in your mind? Why? Because you have tasted, you have experienced, and you love it. Is it hard for you to say, eh, eh, you will quickly bring out the name, Cilatro. That's the same way when it comes to Jesus. Have you tasted of him? Have you experienced him? So, if you have tasted of him, you have experienced him, it should not be difficult for you to tell somebody that Jesus loves you. See, it's not in the many words you use in evangelism. It's not. It's you just telling them your testimony. Have you been saved? Yes. Has your life been changed? Yes. Have you been transformed? Yes. That's all. How? Oh, I met Jesus and my life changed. Really? What did he do to you? Uh, the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. I'm not a better version of me. Simple. Hey, oh, so if I meet this Jesus, yes, if you meet him, he will do the same for, thing for you. But we think that is one big deal. Ah. Ah. But it's not. And scripture says, go into the world and do what? Make disciples. Teaching them. So what you have received here God expects us to go all out there and do the same. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hearing God is not difficult. Isaiah 30, 21. Popular scripture. Isaiah 10, 31. Twenty one, sorry. Isaiah 30, 21. 30, 21. I'm sorry. And your ears shall hear a word. How many of you have heard that scripture before? And your ears shall hear a word behind you. Where? Say what? This is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand, or whenever you turn to the left, your ears, it didn't say your physical ears, your spiritual ears, would hear, shall hear a word behind you. Who is going to be saying the word? So when he says turn right, you are turning left. We need to know whose sheep you are. Are we together? Is God speaking? Yes. This scripture confirms. You will hear behind you a word saying, so he's always speaking. So how do we want to look at now? I say this and um, I want us to be more practical in the next five minutes as I close. What do you think can suppress 
the voice of God in your life. Just take two minutes or a minute to look at that thing quickly. Let's just examine ourselves. What do you think can suppress the voice of God in your life? So I want to hear answers. Fleshy desires, okay. Anger. Lo logic. I love that. Logic. Let's let's get let's get feedback. We are both preaching, don't worry. Doubt, fear, worry, external voices. External voices will come as a result of your fear, your doubt, your worry. And Pastor J took us through how you cannot worry again. How many of us are going to be learning how to practice it? Not to worry. You know, I, no, no, no. My, my, my chill is as is standard now. It's better even, even if you don't provide. I shall know that you will provide. If you have time to take care of the beds that do not feed, and you can take care of bingo on the streets. Bingo is, uh, and it's true. Bingo is fresh. Eating good food and strolling and still shaking tail. How much more me? Am I not of more value than bingo? Amen. Now, these things suppress the voice of God. And why do they suppress the voice of God? Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4. 20. I close with this. Proverbs 4.20. And this is something that we all will practice. This will bring your faith. This will strengthen your, 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 your relationship with God. This will intensify the voice of God in your life. My son, give attention to my words. So, there is a first step here. Paying attention. How do you pay attention? I think PJ said this last week. So, if you are going to pay attention, it means that you must be intentional. Like PJ was saying, if I'm going to release my account number, my dumb account number at the end of this service and say, with the pin, and I'm going to be preaching and saying that I will add everything together, uh, you put everything together, and whatever you it's fine. You know that from the beginning of the moment PJ starts preaching, everybody's looking for the time he starts calling figure. So when he says one, you have written one down, you are paying attention. When he talks and talks, I said three, you have put three down. To be sure, in your head, you know that account number is supposed to be like 11. So by the time he has called like 11 number, okay, I'm in the So the next number will be PIN. Are we together? That's paying attention. So he says, my soul, give attention to my words. First thing. So every time God is speaking, he needs your close attention to it. The next thing he says, incline your ear to my saying. So there's a problem with us inclining our ears. So after paying attention, I'm nothing that can give you problem is your hearing. Eh? Eh? Was it yesterday your mom was saying something about Jedidiah? He's not hearing. That um, he should touch his ear or something. They were here. Incline your ear. I mean, I'm not just talking about this physical ear. I'm talking about your spiritual ear. Next thing. To my saying, which is my words. Next line. Do not let them depart from your eyes. So there are three things first we have seen. First thing is what? Paying attention. Second thing is what? Inclining your ears. Third thing is what? Let them know. What is your eyes seeing? As you turn to Instagram, your eye sees a lot of things. You cannot hear the voice of God. As you turn to the radio and you are hearing a lot of things, you cannot hear the voice of God. So, even in the midst of this, you have to pay attention. Where will you see? You can't even pay attention to the God because not God's word. Next. Keep them. Sorry, go down. Keep them in the midst of your hearts. Proverbs says, out of your heart comes the what? Issues of life. And he's saying, the words that I say you should pay attention to, the words that I'm saying you should incline your ears to, the words I'm saying that your eyes should be beholding is what you should keep in the midst of your heart. So what are you meditating on? Next. For they are 
life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. This scripture can deliver you. For they are life to those who find them. So the problem is that whatever you are looking for in that situation in your life, it means that you have to pay attention to his words, incline your ears, let your eyes see it, and keep them in the midst of your heart. Then you will find that solution. Are you thinking of health? You have health issues. You must do what? Pay attention to the word. You must incline your ears to the word. Your eyes must see the word. Your heart must meditate on the word. Then they will become health to your flesh. So when God says, I have given you all that pertinent to life and godliness, he did not miss words. When God says, I have blessed you with all spiritual blessings, he did not miss words. But where the problem is, is that we are not paying attention. We are not inclining our ears. We are not beholding his word. And we are not meditating on them in our hearts. I want to challenge us this week. Be intentional about hearing God this week. Pay attention to everything so that you want to say, God, I want to hear you speak. God is going to speak even in thoughts. God speaks through thoughts. God speaks in minor situations. God just speaks through situations. Something might just happen that looks like it's weird in your house and God will just be speaking you through, through that thing to you. So pay attention. I want us to just say a short prayer this afternoon. Say, Lord, help me to hear you. May your voice supersede every other voice around me. I shut my ears, my eyes, everything about me to anything that is not of you. Let your voice be the only voice that I will hear. Help me. Help me, God. Let your voice be clear and express. Let your instructions be clear and express. I am tired of struggling to hear. I want to hear you clearly. I open up myself to listening. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So this week, you have an assignment. The first thing you want to do this week is to do what? Pay attention to what? To his words. Second thing you want to do is what? Incline your ears to his words saying. Third thing you want to do is? Third thing? Keep your eyes. Don't let your eyes depart from the word. Don't let your eyes depart from the word. Don't let your I didn't say don't let don't let your eyes depart from the word. I didn't say you should focus on Instagram. I didn't say you should start looking for focus on the word. And the last thing is to what? Meditation. One of the things that we don't practice is meditation. Let me challenge you with something today. And everybody go home. Maybe next week we'll see we can talk about it. Pick a scripture this week as we give promises. I want you to go and meditate on that scripture. Meditate on it. Let it be that that's what you are hearing. In fact, you can record it and play it. Hear it. Every time you open, look at it over and over and over. You will see some revelations in that scripture and you'll be glad that you did. But there's a day that that scripture will, be, will play a very vital role in your life. Let it stay in you. Let it be in you. Amen. Amen.